Oh my goodness. All right, so welcome back everybody to Coffee and Art in the Morning. I'm Dee Dee. We're, uh, this is Wednesday, hump day. Mike, 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 Mike. And um, so we already did, if y'all remember on Monday, we drew or painted this little guy for uh, Miss Annette. And if y'all haven't been around for a long time, you're not going to know Miss Annette. But anyway, she has two dogs, Paula Dean and Martha Stewart. And so we drew, we did one on Monday, so we did this one this morning. So now she's got the two of them. <laughs> and now we're going to read a letter and a little, and a little gifties. Let me move any ad, no, okay, that's just book pin, no addresses there. A little present, birthday present uh, from Miss, Miss uh, Lady Jan. Okay, so she sent she sent me the letter, and bless her heart, she was so sweet. Um, I couldn't read it on Monday because of my eye strain, and there's nothing, I mean, it's not that tiny, you know, it's not that tiny, but she was kind enough to send it to me in a document so I could put it on my iPad and read it large. Aw, <laughs> uh, thanks, Kate. That's why you watch No Drama. I know, I know, I know. So anyway, so I'm going to read the letter. From Come What May Quail Hill, Jan, Lady Jan, North, True North, and uh, Mr. Bear. Well, Jan wrote it, but, you know, uh, I'm sure Mr. Bear was around. Although, I think he's sleeping right now. <laughs> Aw, thanks, Vicki. Okay, so sit back, get your coffee, let's enjoy the letter. Whether she calls herself an author, writer, or not, we know she is. Happy birthday month, dear Februarian. <laughs> this, gift, this gift comes with a story. Smile. Once upon a hill, there lived a den of dragons. Uh, tell me if y'all can hear me okay and I'm not too um, scratchy. Because I'm, I'm reading right here off my iPad. So if it, you know, hopefully it's, hopefully it's, uh, <clears throat> y'all can hear me all right. Once upon a hill, there lived a den of dragons who were quite different than you would expect from all the other dragons you've heard about. They really, really dislike the taste of humans and have good reason never to try them again. It all stems from the experience of great G G G Mother Mexica Mexia Mexia M E X I A Mother Mexia dragon who tried to eat a human once in self defense as the silly thing had come at her yelling waving a pointy stick so she took it up in her mouth to swallow but almost broke a tooth trying to crunch down on it it was totally inedible later they found out that she'd been trying to eat a knight a K-N-I-G-H-T, a knight, for goodness sake. Great stars. Everyone knows that you have to peel them from the shell first. <laughs> and they're frankly not worth the effort. <laughs> you got to peel the knights from their shells. They also have an unusual mutation. A third or wandering eye right in the middle of their forehead that can detach itself from its host and wander around as they command. And lastly, rather than hoarding gold, they hoard books. Most likely, millions of volumes by now are stacked up, stacked up mile high in their mountain caves and guarded just as fiercely as any other dragon would guard their treasure. It's a wonder how they, it is now, wait, Sorry, guys. It is now wonder that they proudly bear the name of Draconius Libris. You know, dragon library, dragon books. The book hoarding all started with a young dragon named Sylvan. Who, while swimming in the river just below his, his ire, saw a rather petite, okay, I don't know what this is. Brigadine, Brigadine Novice, okay, B-R-I-G-H-I-D-I-N-E, Brigadine Novice, attempting to do a dive off the main tower of the monastery. In parentheses, she had been dared to do so by the group of her fellow postulants. As she, as she dove from the height, Sylvan could tell 
Sivlin. Sivlin. I'm, I want to pronounce her names right. S-Y-V-L-A-N. Sivlin. 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 I want to pronounce it very exotic. <laughs> Sivlin could tell that she was not going to fall safely away from the jutting rocks at the base of the tower. Quickly, Sylvan reared up out of the water, spread, spread his wings, and with a great whoosh, soared into the sky, opened his massive toothy mouth, and gently caught the young novice before she dashed herself to pieces on the rocks. Okay, hang on, guys. i got to go to the next page. Okay, wait. i got to go back. Did I miss something here? Needless to say, the Brigadine Postulant and Dragon became great friends, and S. Aisling, that was the nun's name, as a thank you for saving her life, taught the eager dragon and all the languages she knew. Okay, I have to go to the second page. Hang on, guys. Okay. And all the languages she knew and how to read them as well. So begun the love affair of books. I'm sorry, guys. I keep messing this up. <laughs> Sorry. Often Sylvan could be seen patiently waiting on the riverbank with a handmade basket dangling from his mouth, soon to be filled with a book or two in exchange for the one he'd already read. This was the start of the first ever lending library. <laughs> one day as Sylvan was waiting, he heard a tremendous commotion and saw a Aisling and all her sister nuns hurrying as fast as they could towards him. Vikings have been sighted, they yelled at him. Vikings, Vikings, save those books. They're the most precious we have. The rest are in the tower. We will soon be scattered, but save our books until we return to claim them. Sylvan opened his mouth very wide and a large carpet was placed on his tongue. Then books, books, and scrolls and books and boxes were hurriedly stacked inside. He closed his mouth very carefully, nodded his great head at his friend and the other nuns, and once more spread his massive wings and headed skyward, home to his cave and library. Aisling and the nuns and the dragon versus Aisling and the nuns and the dragon versus the Vikings is a tale for another time. But for now, I want to tell you but what we have in your package. <laughs> Where's my package? Where'd it go? Where's my package? It is a baby dragon skin dory pocketbook with its very own wandering eye. Okay, so there you go. Can you see it? Look. Oh, wait, I lost my place. <laughs> I took my eyes off the page. <clears throat> now, Miss Dee Dee, before you get upset thinking that the baby dragon, by what, by the way, her name is Deidre, was harmed in making of this dragon dory, let me assure you that Deidre is still very much alive and well and growing like a weed in that cave of hers in the mountain in the back of Quail Hill. Quail Hill's where Jan, uh, Lady Jan lives. Like some reptiles, dragons shed their skin every hundred years or so and give select pieces to those they deem worthy. They usually pick librarians, but book lovers such as you and I are sometimes lucky enough to be included. Deidre has sent you a bit of her dragon skin along with her wee wandering eye to be made into a small book for your pleasure. If you stroke her wandering eye ever so gently on the bottom part of the lid, the eye will open slightly, but being, but mostly being young, it just wants to snooze. Grin. The wandering eye keeps an eye on those who have dragon skin books, and if they feel that the book is being misused or tossed about, be warned. The eye will tattle on you, and the book will disappear overnight from your library. Within the dragon dory are sheets of 112 pound paper cut to three by four size. I hope that is a good size for you to work with. Let me let me pick it up because I had to go to the third page, guys. I also remember that you like to have a dangle tassel at the bottom of your book. I made this one 
for you. Wait, I made this one so the dragon fire tassel can be slid either up or down. Let me put the iPad down for just a second. This can be slid up or down. <clears throat> Depending how you like it. With the package, I'm including a small gauze bag. Where'd it go? Oh, where'd my little gauze bag go? Wait, wait. Did I set it aside? Oh, no, it's in here. Hang on. Here. Let me unwrap it here. With the package, I'm sending a small gauze bag with green, white, and dark purple lavender. Some Chinese Joss, New Year Joss paper, which is that right here. I'll take it out in a minute. One with the lovely fierce dragon on it. And she also sent these other papers. You know, let's go. Here's the go. Here's the one with the dragon. Okay, I'll open them all up in a minute. I lost my place again. And of course, some money envelopes you can use to put things in for giveaways. Along with the above, I've also included a 2017 bookmark which has come all the way from Morocco via my cousin who was recently there. I love how the Europeans arrange their dates sideways. So here we go. You won't be able to see it, but it's, it's the, uh, the opposite way or the sideways. Um... Deidre would also like to tell you that she is very sorry to have missed your birthday, but it's a birthday month, so Deidre can rest rest safely there, Jan. Um, but hope she will forgive her as she is very young and somewhat forgetful. I told her about you being a Februaryan and your birthday month, and that made her very happy. So happy birthday month from all of uh, from Quail Hill, Quentin and his courts, Deidre Dragon, Misty the Grumpy Cat, Mr. Bear, not so grumpy, and of course the Lady Quail. Blessings. So yeah, don't tell me that our Lady Jen is not a writer. <laughs> so look at this huge piece of look. It's like a little like a little you put it on you, I guess. I don't know. It's awesome. So there's that Joss paper. And I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. J-O-S-S. -S. And this smells so good. Take a sniff, guys. Thanks, Scooby. Oh, smells so good. And some book paper and some some uh, flowers. And these I think these are her flowers. Uh, photographs. Uh, am I right? Let me see. No, she didn't write. These are your flowers, correct? Or in your neck of the woods, Lady Jan? I think these are her actual photographs of hers. I think. Because she always takes awesome photographs. And then here's another paper here. Look at this, guys. Look at this. Look, it's all writing on here. When you need to be an author, children's book. Yes, Jan does need to be a children's book author for sure. This is all um, writing on here. See, it's like a—it's almost like a scroll thing. A virtual sniff. That's right, precious. <laughs> and then you know she sent the little the little Joss papers and some little um, you know that's what they are. They're like little. Um, I think you're supposed to like say a prayer on them and then they burn them if I'm, if I'm right about that. And they have so many different kinds and guys, I, you know, I have no idea what they each one means. I know they have meanings for different ones. So yeah, and they all smell so good. It all smells so good. Some little lace, which could, you know, this could almost be a, like, I need to make a bookmark out of that. And some um, more little... I mean, I'm thinking all this now is like dragon, dragon, dragon skins and feathers and, you know, dragon lore. It's all dragon lore now. But look at this, guys. Isn't that just the awesomest thing? Can you see the eye? Look. Can you see it? It's dragon skin. Dragon scales. Oh, my gosh. It's, I'm going to pet it nicely, like she said. <laughs> 
And then she has all kinds of little, uh, it's like a little dory. See, they're like little, little, um, attached. See how it's attached with the little thing there? And she has all different kinds of little papers and all, just all kinds of little things tucked in here. Little, um, tank paint water. <laughs> So, yeah, all just kind of little, my little dragon for Miss Dee Dee, made by hand. Oh, sorry, it's not wanting to focus. Confabulated Jan by, by hand. Confabulated by hand, Jan. <laughs> so, anyway, guys, I wanted to do it justice, so I wanted to read this all out. <laughs> hey little bookworm so yeah isn't that look it's just like you can put it at the top or the bottom <laughs> so yeah thank you Miss Jan so much I know right so I'm going to save this video as its own little um, its own dragon book dragon uh, story so yeah written by Jan Lady Jan I know. All right, guys. It's your water cup so you don't get... Oh, it's for over the water cup so I don't get confused. Oh, my gosh. That's so clever. It's paint water. I get it. You put this on your paint water. Oh, my gosh. Ha, <laughs> ha, Jan. Well, let me, put, let me put it this way, Jan. Let me show y'all something. I don't think I'm going to confuse this with this <laughs> just saying it's probably not going to happen I'm probably not going to confuse the two <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> I'm going to use it as a bookmark Gonna, it won't happen. Okay, just saying. All right, guys, let me save this video and I'll be right back.